Welcome. Welcome to video number 5 of module number 6 which is on traffic assignment and the topic of this particular video is going to be on just to get you some ideas about capacity constraint also known as capacity restraint restraint so the, it goes by that name as well actually in this presentation itself I uh, interchangeably use both words why capacity constraint if you saw the videos before all or nothing or stochastic I barely mentioned anything about capacity the volume so travel time is a function of traffic volume correct so what good is in any assignment technique if it doesn't consider that travel time and flow relationship that is why as the travel time increases uh, I'm, I'm sorry as the volume increases travel time increases so we have to take that into consideration so essentially flow to capacity ratio is what we are looking at all or nothing assignment that's why it's such a goofy technique almost nobody uses but there are situations where you could use it so capacity restraint can be worked into stochastic assignment which we just um, uh, talked about in video number four of traffic assignment of module six uh, but it gets already that is complicated it gets even more complicated when you include capacity restraint so what is the speed versus flow relationship so this is the flow if you forgotten Q represents flow which is vehicles per hour and you being the speed let's say miles per hour mph so this is the simplest you can see as the flow increases speed goes down eh, if only it is that simple but if it is like this how is it going to relate how, how is it going to relate to travel time remember in pathfinding we are not looking at speed we are looking at travel time speed has to be converted into travel time so let's take a look at the if this were your speed flow relationship how does the travel time flow relationship look like it looks like this if your speed flow relationship is like that your travel time to traffic flow which is Q here represents uh, is like this you have this being your free flow travel time all right so far so good but when we learned about models of traffic flow of traffic flow so this is in your intro course to transportation engineer engineering so we know there is something like this it's a parabolic re relationship between speed and flow and somewhere here is your capacity which is Q capacity uh, sort of like here is free flow speed remember that it's coming back okay this is more or less a, a very realistic speed versus flow relationship and a corresponding travel time versus flow relationship will look something like this it's uh, it's a uh, it's a power of uh, traf uh, volume capacity ratio which we will see what that is again here is your here is your free flow travel time and if your capacity estimation is correct this should go somewhere asymptotic to capacity line but it never is accurate I mean capacity is just a belief it's not reality so it's never going to be accurate 
So you will see, that's why you see volume capacity ratio exceeding one. If your capacity estimation is so correct, how can volume exceed capacity, right? But in practicality, you'll see volume capacity ratio is more than one because your capacity estimation is wacko. That brings us to introduction of the term capacity restraint. Now, we just said volume delay relationship, or it's actually volume versus travel time relationship. Tra travel speed decreases with increase in flow, which travel time increases as the volume capacity ratio on the link increases. So way back when Federal Highways Administration was not there, actually there is a Bureau of Public Roads and uh, before the Department of Transportation was formed, Bureau of Public Roads is the one that was in charge of uh, highways at that time. I believe this is in early 60s. They came up with this, uh, uh, a function formula. Travel time on a link is a function of free flow travel time and volume capacity ratio. So that is, in its entirety, this, what you see here, ladies and gentlemen, this is your BPR function. So how does it look in terms of, uh, in a chart? So here we have, you have the free flow travel time, and it goes pretty much parallel to x-axis to some extent, even if... Uh, well, a volume capacity ratio is up to maybe 7.765, something like that. And then the travel time keeps going up, but not, but not like that. In this case, you see a travel uh, volume capacity ratio even 2. So this is the relationship they propose that should be used in capacity restraint assignment. In other words, when you put more volume on a particular link, and you have to reduce its travel time. So now here is a catch-22. Travel time is it's dependent on vol uh, volume capacity ratio or volume, essentially capacity assuming it's constant. Travel time dependent on volume and volume is dependent on travel time. So that's why this whole thing is an iterative process. So you will do it like a few number of iterations and then do some sort of a reconciliation process or averaging or some other mechanism by which you you bring down uh, an estimate of travel uh, uh, traffic on each of the highway links you are modeling. Let's take a, l a further look at this BPR function. If you put that uh, in the previous form where T equals T sub zero, one plus alpha V over C B. If you put in the alpha place 0.15, in the beta place four, that is your BPR function. But this is a generic form of BPR function. If alpha value is one and beta is four, at volume capacity ratio one, your travel time is going to be twice that of T0, uh, free flow travel time. Uh, remember, T is a function of free flow travel time and volume capacity ratio, alpha and beta being constant. If the volume capacity ratio is zero, that means there's no traffic on the highway, your travel time is nothing but free flow, free flow travel time, which is T0. And if you exactly at half that volume capacity ratio, travel time barely changes, only 6% higher than T sub zero, that's when alpha is one and beta is four. And that is for a level of service, these two values I just mentioned, alpha one and beta four, they correspond to a level of service of E. And if you want to use level of service D as your criteria, use 0.15 for alpha. And that's the BPR function. This is the easiest of all the 
travel time functions. And believe me, bazillion research papers are there on this uh, travel time functions. Uh, you will see some of them right now. Here's one, travel speeds. So remember, if you want to plot speeds versus flow, some, uh, the typical shape of the curve here is U, here is Q. Typical shape of the curve is look, it should look like this. So here you have U, here, uh, sorry, U, and here you have VC ratio. Well, basically, Q or VC ratio, your curve should be in the same form. I think this is probably the one that is in the closest form. So this is the old BPR curve, what I just uh, circled there. You have highway capacity manual for 70 miles per hour, highway capacity manual uh, equation for 60 miles per hour, highway capacity manual 50 miles per hour. There are different, different functions. And again, BPR coefficients, recommended coefficients for multi-lane highways and freeways, they are like that. Who gives that? NCHRP 365, that's your textbook. Now here is another fancy um, link performance function. Oh, that's another name too. Travel time, um, travel time flow relationship or travel time to VC, re, uh, VC relationship is also called link performance function. So you might want to do that somewhere, link performance function performance function. So this is used by Virginia Travel Demand Modeling Policies and Procedures Manual. That's what it says. For freeways, they use alpha of 0 0.20, beta of 10. Uh, so for non-freeways, alpha of 0 0.05 and beta of again 10. So these are some of the link performance functions. We'll be using standard one in our problems which we will start seeing from video number six, which is the next one. So this will conclude our video number five of module number six. See ya.